Hey everyone, for Tricomes.com, I'm Ashley Manning, and this is Careers in Cannabis. On this show, we sit down with staffing agencies, cannabis companies, and other industry professionals to discuss employment opportunities in the burgeoning cannabis industry. Today's guest has worked in healthcare as a registered nurse for 33 years, and right before her career in cannabis, she was working for the healthcare insurance provider Anthem Blue Cross. Fast forward to today, and she's built training programs to grow healthcare workers' competency and cannabis coaches with all they need to be successful in patient consults through her workshops. On this episode, we talk to Elizabeth Mack, founder of Holistic Caring, whose mission is bridging the gap between traditional and cannabis medicine. We start our conversation with how she ended up with a career in cannabis and the skill sets she carried over from healthcare to the medical cannabis industry. Hey, Elizabeth, welcome to the show. Hey, Ashley. Thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah, it's, it's very good to have you here. I know you and I have had the opportunity to know each other for quite some time. I, I believe the entire time I've been in the cannabis industry. Uh, we work together uh, directly delivering medical cannabis to patients uh, during Prop 215 days. And mm -hmm. uh, well, once Prop 64 passed, we disappeared, you know, and so it's great to reconnect with you. Thank um, you. I, on this show, I usually like to start off with a little bit of what you were doing prior to working in cannabis. So I'd love to start with what you were doing right before cannabis was a thing for you. Well, uh, my last real job was uh, regional sales manager for Anthem Blue Cross for the county of San Diego. So I was working in employee benefits uh, in a sales position for a, a good decade. Uh, and before that, I had about five years in operations. Uh, and before that, I had about a, a decade in hospitals. And so uh, I've got a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Bachelor of Arts in Psychology, uh, and an MBA in Healthcare Administration. And so uh, my first 10 years I spent in hospitals, the next uh, 20 years were in insurance companies. Uh, and then the past six years, uh, I've been working in cannabis. But, you know, in my sales position with Anthem Blue Cross, it's very similar to what I'm, wanting, what I'm trying to do now. Uh, with uh, cannabis and CBD okay. health coaches. Uh, so I was responsible for, you know, training and managing uh, about a thousand brokers in San Diego County, insurance brokers. And so helping them understand our propositions and our, our, our products, uh, as well as, you know, how to communicate those uh, to clients and, and employers and employees and that sort of thing. And so um, you know, those skills that I was using to run sales for Anthem, very similar to the sk skills that I'm using to run holistic caring. Uh, I've developed all of this education and I'm training others on how to uh, communicate how cannabis works as medicine to their audience, whoever that might be, uh, and training and supporting them to do so. When you say others, who are those others? Who are you training? Who specifically? Well, it depends on, you know, how uh, somebody has approached holistic caring, but we have a couple of different programs. So uh, I built programs. Um, if I if I back up a little bit and, and talk about how I really got into cannabis, okay. uh, you know, I, I injured myself and I, I went out on leave and I, I had surgery. Uh, and uh, during that leave of absence, I was introduced to cannabis through my uh, chiropractor's office with a medical massage. The therapist had CBD in the oil. And I said, hey, what is this? It smells funny. And she said, it's cannabis. <laughs> and I said, well, I don't want cannabis. I, I'm, I'm a squeaky clean person here. Uh, and she said, well, it's, it's a topical, first of all. It's not going to make you high or intoxicated. It's not going to uh, give you a dirty drug screen. Uh, but it is going to reduce your inflammation and your pain and your swelling and get you back to functioning and mobility faster. So I said, sign me up and tell me more. And so that was <laughs> my, literally my entry into cannabis. But I started to work with her and her boyfriend who had a pop-up dispensary over in PB. And I started okay. to study everything I could on cannabis. I researched everything. I said, hey, people have been telling me there's no medical use for this. It's still a schedule one drug. Uh, there's, there's no legitimate medical uses and it's highly addictive and abusive and dangerous. And what you're telling me is not true. You know, mm -hmm. What you're telling me, that's not true, right? That can't hold up. And so mm -hmm. I was my own guinea pig. And so all of 2015, uh, I did all the research. I read every book I could on cannabis at the library. And I started to take high doses of CBD. And over a period of a year, I was able to wean myself off the Motrin, 
uh, and the, the muscle relaxants and medicine for sleep and depression and even at some point asthma uh, because my lungs started opening up again and I didn't even need wow. those anymore. And I started to not have the migraines I was having and my blood pressure dropped and I didn't need hydrochlorothiazide for that. And so I said, hey, if I can heal myself, I need to help others. Uh, and so that's what I did. I, I, I was at Women Grow in, in uh, Denver in January of 16. Uh, and I saw people were making good medicines, they were selling medicines, but nobody was interpreting them for medical patients like me that truly wanted to say, how do I replace polypharmacy with medical cannabis? And that's what I set out to solve as the problem uh, of you know where holistic caring needed to fit in the chain. Is So you were doing this while still working at Anthem? No, I left Anthem and uh, I was I was working in, in cannabis- Full time. Uh, a hundred percent on my own and, and really just living off savings and doing some private insurance, uh, in, in 2015. But in 2016, when I came back from women grow, that's when I opened holistic caring full time, hung out my shingle, started my website, started to market to, to doctors, to talk to their patients. Uh, and what happened was I found a palliative care physician and he had the right market, right? He, he was a believer in medical cannabis himself couldn't touch it, you know, couldn't, couldn't really mm -hmm. talk about this with patients. So he uh, extended his patients to, to me and I would see them and do consultations. Uh, and really that's what was the impetus for writing my training manual. So, uh, okay. you know, when I was working with Dr. Bob here in San Diego um, and I was working, imagine the patients. So most people in their eighties uh, that had intractable pain, end of life cancers, uh, you know, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, all kinds of uh, situations like that, where, you know, the pharmaceuticals were all tapped out. Obviously, people were uh, prescribed as much as they could be, and the pills were still not working, surprisingly. And so uh, medical cannabis enter that, right? So we have tinctures and topicals and transdermals and microdose edibles and things uh, like in the, in the toolkit. And so I started to introduce this to patients and they started to uh, be able to wean off the oxycodone, wean off the Ambien, wean off uh, the Risperidone and Seroquel and some of the antipsychotics that they were on. And so, you know, it was, a, it was a wonderful experiment in those early days in 2016, 2017. And so I wrote a training manual to bring on other nurses and to train them because I, I, I needed to leverage myself. And so uh, that training manual became my book. Uh, so I wrote a book, it's called Cannabis for Health, Become a Coach. Uh, and that was published last year. And from that book, I had written all the courses. So uh, a, a training that is a complete course for healthcare professionals, as well as uh, a smaller course that removes the pharmacology uh, and you know really goes into the conditions that are best treated with cannabis in an overview rather than deep dive modules. Uh, and that is uh, the course that I have for uh, industry uh, and dispensaries and that sort of thing. So there are two tracks to my courses, one for healthcare professionals and one for industry, uh, people that want to work in CBD and cannabis, but uh, don't have any idea on how to get started. Uh, that would be an ideal uh, starting point with my uh, cannabis industry or educators course. That's uh, the educators course. So, uh, is that is there a book specifically for the educators course and specific to the industry, or they're the same book? The the beauty is that all of these courses are on an online platform in an app. Oh, wow. so <laughs> yeah. So I, I have a course platform called the Mighty Networks. Uh, and through that course platform, I've built the modules. And so module one uh, is all about the history of cannabis and the science and all about uh, the endocannabinoid system and Dr. Raphael Meshulam and how this was just, you know, um, started back in the 60s in the investigation into THC and, and, and the harms that it might cause in the body. Uh, and through all of that NIH and NIDA funded research, we found actually how cannabis works at, to our benefit how cannabis, uh, CBD, THC, these other cannabinoids are neuroprotective, antioxidants, antipsychotics, anti-anxieties, anti-cancer properties, uh, um, anti-convulsants um, for seizures, um, and, and for many different reasons that we could use cannabis and, and really an analgesic, uh, something to help with pain and inflammation. Cannabinoids are very anti-inflammatory. And so 
All of those scientific principles are explained in module one on how cannabis might work uh, in the body based on the research, as well as then from there, uh, des uh, des describing all of the different cannabinoids and breaking down the plant into the compounds. So the cannabinoids, the terpenoids, the flavonoids, the, uh, all of the different components that are uh, part of the plant, as well as um, the products the that are then made out of those uh, cannabinoids. And so what is, uh, you know, inhalation and, and vapes and, and, you know, whether you should be inhaling uh, pre-rolls or, you know, grinding your own and using a portable vaporizer, which obviously is the healthiest option for inhalation, right? And so going into all the products uh, that, you know, so the, the history, the science, um, how, how we lost this, you know, all about prohibition, right? So we had cannabis as a medicine prescribed in this country from 1850 all the way until 1941 when it was pulled out of the pharmacopoeia after the 1937 tax act, you know, and I explained that in the history section, how, you know, through corporate interests, greed, uh, racism, uh, different uh, things that were going on in um, really xenophobia and uh, prohibition and, and some of those early uh, people that were stigmatizing this plant and the people that were using it, uh, black and brown skinned people in this country. So I explain all of that in module one. Uh, and then module two uh, for healthcare professionals is uh, a very large uh, course uh, module that goes into all the pharmacology. So what are the pharmacokinetics? When you take this, mm -hmm. uh, these compounds into the body, how does the body break them down and absorb them and utilize them and excrete them and process them? And uh, what are the timing and interactions that we might need to uh, steer clear of in, in uh, using other pharmaceuticals? Uh, spacing doses, that, uh, you know, and that's I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to step in there mm -hmm. and uh, chime in, you know, the interactions, the, the drug interactions. Mm -hmm. I think that is a huge skill set that you are parlaying over from before you had a career in cannabis to now. And I don't think that's any kind of education that's being shared with um, the retail workers or what some people refer to them as bug tenders. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's something that really needs to be emphasized. And do you think that, uh, going a little bit off subject here, do you think that federal legalization, you know, could hinder medical cannabis? If, cause it sounds like you put in so much work into medical cannabis, are you concerned that it could all go away in all of your hard work that you've been doing? Well, federal might... legalization is about to turn the tide in our favor so that more people, okay. what we want is for Americans and for the global population uh, to understand that there are clinical therapeutic purposes for this plant and that it's not just recreation. So federal legalization is, is doing a couple of different things, right? So if we look at the MORE Act, which is broken down in module three, uh, you know, okay. in, in where I go into all the, the legalization issues, but the, you know, we're, we're talking about descheduling and decriminalizing. And so if we dececriminalize, first of all, we're going to get people out of jail that should have never been there. And if we deschedule, yeah, then, uh, we are removing the research barriers, uh, to this plant so that we can study not just what they're growing at the university of Mississippi, but also what is, you know, really being sold in modern dispensaries today and how yeah. those break down and are utilized in the body and then how to use them clinically in medicine. So, you know, what I'm doing uh, is, is really in track two. A lot of the federal legalization is uh, really just running through track one of let's just decriminalize it and uh, deschedule it so that people can treat it like alcohol and uh, experiment how they want. But that's, that's only one part of the story, Ashley. What right. about all of the people like me that are other 50 year olds that said, hey, I don't want to be on these pills. Is there a better option? And how do Absolutely. you use it clinically? Holistic caring always solves that problem. And so, you know, for the clinicians, for the healthcare professionals, for the nurses, uh, for the holistic providers, chiropractors, acupuncturists, naturopaths, mm -hmm. my course uh, goes into all of the practical applications on how to take these cannabinoids, how to understand the products, the dosing, the pharmacology, and then to integrate that into clinical practice using the dosing protocols uh, that I've, I've written in module two uh, that explains how to use this for each and every condition that uh, is uh, most uh, 
favored by, by medical cannabis patients. People that have cancer, people that have chronic pain, uh, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, neurodegenerative conditions. When you think about cannabis being a neuroprotective antioxidant, uh, and you have somebody with Alzheimer's, what does that mean? And how do you break that down mm -hmm. into actually using this for that patient? Well, if we could slow down the progression. We could slow down uh, the neurodegeneration through the neuroprotective properties of CBD. Uh, THC actually inhibits acetylcholinesterase. And so that's, a, that's an enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine, which is needed for memory, right? And so if we're using a one-to-one -one oil, we're not only slowing down the neurodegeneration, we're stimulating memory, we're stimulating energy, we're stimulating appetite. Mm -hmm. Think about patients that have Alzheimer's on that same case. They're not eating uh, in, in some aspects. They're very restless and agitated, and we can slow down the anxiety, we can slow down uh, some of the uh, agitation that they're having with microdoses of CBD THC. And you know, it, in introducing this to somebody and their family, is uh, you know art and science, right? It's like, how do you uh, bridge the topic of using medical cannabis for somebody that's 80 years old with Alzheimer's? You do it in steps and very slowly and you know, with a couple of articles and breaking down the stigma and then saying, I'm going to take your hand and hold it through this process. I'm going to be your guide, you know? And so there's, mm -hmm. when you, it's the same thing with uh, psilocybin. You could have that for just a recreational trip and a, and a Saturday afternoon and, and get your own insights, or you could have that in, in a s assisted guided therapy where you're working with a professional mm -hmm. to, to purposely go after uh, what you'd like to resolve. That's the way that I see this and interpret cannabis. And so, you know, what I'm trying to do on the healthcare professionals track is to give them everything that they need to manage patients in cancer and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and autoimmune conditions and uh, mental health issues, uh, severe mm -hmm. anxiety, depression, bipolar, PTSD, uh, and you know, pediatrics. Think about autism and seizures uh, and the clinical applications we have there. Uh, you know, and so for, for me, I get very excited because uh, it's endless as to what we'd like to accomplish. When we think about uh, America spending $3.5 trillion in healthcare costs every year, 18% of our GDP, what are we getting for that? You know, and, and you can see our outcomes aren't all that good. So, you know, mm -hmm. the value proposition that cannabis brings to clinicians uh, is, is extreme, but it's going to, you know, take a few years to get people trained uh, and to mm -hmm. allow them to understand that this literally can replace and reduce pharmaceuticals if done correctly. How, how long is, because let me back up. You're pro, you, you've you been in cannabis now for five years, essentially? Five years. That's, it sounds like you've been in it for an eternity. Mm -hmm. How long does it take for a healthcare professional to go through your, your courses and your training programs? Okay, so the Holistic Caring uh, Training Program, uh, the, certif the CBD Cannabis Health Coach Certification Program is mm -hmm. the full title. Uh, you could probably go through that course in about a month, uh, you know, start to finish. Uh, and then the licensing program not only includes the course with uh, module one of all the, the history and science and the research, mm -hmm. module two, the clinical applications, module three is all of the business, the applications, the legal uh, provider uh, and patient considerations mm -hmm. and networking, business building, all of that. So it's, it's a process, right? So you go through the okay. course in about a month. Uh, but then uh, the licensing program includes a toolkit where I give them literally every item I've ever created. So the, from, from a 90-minute appointment process uh, sheet, so what you should be doing in 10-minute increments, to the actual disclosures and liability waivers that clinicians need wow. patients to sign off on, that this is educational in nature, this is not a provider-patient wow. relationship, I'm providing education to you. Um, so the, the toolkit has uh, the assessment forms, so a short and a long form assessment to really uh, understand that patient uh, so that you can then explain how cannabinoids might work to mitigate what they have going on and to heal their body uh, and then to teach them how that's going to unfold. Uh, and then all of the patient teaching that needs to go along with that, uh, as well as uh, community presentations that they can go out and, and present in their community. So. Uh, the licensing program also uh, contains a monthly mastermind, 
And so I have another one coming up this Thursday where I'm teaching all of the cannabis health coaches that are on board how to uh, truly develop their business uh, and to do marketing, to uh, market to uh, consumers as well as to other healthcare professionals so that they could be seen as the specialist on cannabinoid medicine in their communities. Wow. Uh, and so uh, our monthly mastermind deep dives this, you know, and how to make this practical and to make money with this career. Because mm -hmm. literally, think about all the healthcare practitioners that have their own practice. And maybe they need a new ace in the hole. Maybe they need something mm -hmm. exciting to talk about. And medical cannabis just came to their town, right? Think about all of these yep. legal states. We now have 36 legal states uh, in mm -hmm. medical, 15 le legal recreational ones. Uh, and so we have more improved access. We have like, what, 75% of our country now live in a medical legal area. And so these clinicians that were just a chiropractor before, just an acupuncturist or just a naturopath, or just a, a nurse doing health coaching, right? Now they can add cannabinoid therapeutics to what they do uh, as the, the cherry on top and imagine their practice taking off. So that's my true audience for the healthcare professionals, right? Wow. People that already have I'm a in, I'm... that just want to interlace this with what they do and who they are. I am just... I'm speechless. Like I, I know what you do and we have known each other. And this is, there's so much information that you're giving to healthcare providers. What has been the biggest challenge you've, you've seen overcoming this and, and getting people who are already in holistic medicine to accept this program and be willing to teach it to their patients? What's, what's been your biggest challenge with that? Well, really finding, you know, that setting up the systems to run the business are, is very difficult, you know, setting up the website, right, setting up the SEO sure. and really finding the people that are looking for me is probably the greatest obstacle. Uh, you know, how do I find people that are really ready to do this, really ready to say, you know, I want to work in CBD and cannabis medicine, but I don't have a clue on how to get started. So finding them is probably the hardest part. Uh, but, um, you know, when, when you think about the value differential that they could have in their community, um, you know, and also think about what that does for the cannabis industry. It helps break the stigma because there is still a steep, steep stigma. And, you know, somebody like Holistic Caring can really help the cannabis industry by bringing in healthcare professionals and saying, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to train you, guide you, support you, and give you a toolkit with literally everything you need to do this as a business. Um, you know, and so that is breaking the stigma by making it much more approachable. And going back to the butt tenders, they're not supposed to understand medicine, right? They're not supposed to be, they're retail employees. You know, and, you know, I always talk about dispensaries like an Apple store where, you know, they're in there to enhance somebody's experience and to help them, you know, get through life and have a smile. And, you know, and maybe they're talking about, you know, reducing anxiety and stress, helping people sleep, which, of course, is going to improve health conditions across the board if you can have better sleep uh, and better uh, uh, response to the stresses of life, less anxious uh, and so cannabinoids can do that. The, the dispensaries don't need to understand the clinical therapeutics of that. They just need to know, you know, X, Y, Z products work. And that's what they get to explain. You know, I've had people come in and continuously buy this product because it's solving this need for them. And that's what they're allowed to communicate. They're not going to sit down and say, you know, talk to me about uh, all of the different pharmaceuticals you're on, uh, what your blood pressure and your blood sugar are, uh, you know, what kind of cancer. Uh, you have, or, you know, how big the tumors are. Bud tenders are never mm -hmm. supposed to do that. So there always has to be uh, a, a wellness and, and recreational track, as well as a medical track where you're literally doing clinical therapeutics. Yeah, that's very accurate. Uh, and I, I hope that there are, because there are bud tenders out there who are asking things and giving advice. Mm -hmm. And I hope that, they understand that that is more harmful than it is good. Even though the intention, mm -hmm. I believe, is good, um, it's not, you know, good for the patient because there, there definitely are some interactions right. with cannabis and in psychiatric medicine specifically. Well, when you um, think about that, okay, if you just break that down, serotonin uh, is is activated and stimulated by by CBD. CBD can actually mm -hmm. activate the 5-HT receptor, which helps you make 
serotonin. And then you can keep it in your system longer. And if you're taking SSRIs at the same time, like Zoloft and Paxil and Prozac and that sort of thing, then you might have uh, elevated serotonin levels, which could be a medical emergency. Uh, and people don't know that, but it is in, in the course. Uh, now, now, the Great. thing is, for the cannabis industry course, so I have, again, the, the three tracks. Where one is for healthcare professionals, where all okay. of this is, is uh, indicated. Uh, the second is the cannabis industry insiders, uh, you know, which is just my CBD coach. That is mm -hmm. going to have all of the information that a bud tender would really need to understand to have a base understanding of medical conditions and how the cannabinoids mm -hmm. might work uh, to help reduce symptoms. And really we're talking about reducing symptoms. We're not talking about treating things. Uh, and mm -hmm. so if you can get uh, a broad uh, brush stroke of how the cannabinoids work in the body to be anti-inflammatory, to be anti-anxiety and anti-insomnia, to maybe help digestion, uh, and to understand some of the basic principles of, you know, neurological and immune uh, function, then you can you can kind of have a better idea of how these products might work. But in the in the bud tender course, in the cannabis industry course, you know, I'm also spelling out that for on compliance issues, you're not supposed to be talking about things in a clinical setting. You're supposed to be talking about the broad brushstrokes of what the product manufacturer has on the label, right? using those labels, and then knowing how to have the best medicine. So let's say uh, somebody wants to buy the uh, CBD cannabis coach and run a CBD store in Georgia, right? I give them the information they need to do that uh, and to mm -hmm. have proper discussions so that the, the consumers that are coming in uh, can be pointed to the best medicines and understand why. So we talk more about quality medicines and how to vet them. Like I have something called the flow criteria, flower derived, mm -hmm. lab tested, organic and whole plant. You know, what does that mean <laughs> in the world of yeah. isolates and distillates, you know, that are in the dispensary? And if you have a true medical patient, you know, how to steer them towards whole plant formulations mm -hmm. rather than isolates, because it's going to be better medicine. That's all explained yeah. in the courses. And again, wow. this bifurcates the whole medical track, wellness, recreational track, because, you know, sure. you, you really need to, to have two ways to do this. And so that's mm -hmm. why I've created both pathways so that I Makes have sense. the total course with the healthcare professionals, including everything and the butt tender course where I've removed all the pharmacology and the, de the dense scientific uh, principles <laughs> that clinicians need and Talk mm -hmm. more about compliance and accessibility on understanding products. Wow. So uh, I'm going to shift gears a little bit here. Okay. Do you think, it's still the same topic, but um, do you think that with the pandemic, there's, you know, sales obviously are increasing. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's due to more increased pain, anxiety, or the worry that the dispensary might shut down. We've been deemed essential. I don't think that's happening. Um, but I think that's helping with the destigmatizing that you were talking about, which means more patients are going to be coming to their healthcare provider saying, hey, you know, I noticed a lot of people are using cannabis. It's on the news. It's, I'm seeing it on the internet. And so do you feel that more health, this is actually going to progress medical cannabis a little bit further and faster? And you know, what's your opinion on that? Well, yes. Uh, so one, yes, absolutely. Um, people, people are fed up with medicine not working. Uh, medicine being profit-driven, pharmaceutically focused, right? That's what and we you have get in healthcare. You get to speak upon that because you worked for an in healthcare insurance I, provider. I've been, I know. was on the inside for 20 <laughs> years in insurance companies you know. and inside hospitals for 10 years before that. So, you know, I understand um, evidence-based protocols using the pharmaceutical approach. Mm -hmm. Literally, doctors and all the clinicians in this country are trained based on pharmaceutical guided studies. The pharmaceutical companies sponsor all of the research and the clinical studies. First of all, they only bring to light all of the studies that are favorable to their products, and they bury anything that shows uh, issues or problems with their products. So wow. when you think about it, like 95% of our studies in America 
are all guided by the, the pharmaceutical industries. And that's what the doctors are taught. Literally, they're just smart people that memorize a lot and they've got their conditions and that they work with and they get the uh, pharmaceuticals that they're told to use to, for those. And that's what's uh, reimbursed. That's what's sold. That's how this system is, is all done. And so the patients don't have a true option, do they? Who's really representing the patient? When you go to a hospital, when you go to your doctor, uh, you, you, you're in the, the pharmaceutically driven industry, period. Cannabis represents the patient. This is a patient driven movement. This is a patient driven um, formulations. All of the products, think about the products that we have in a modern dispensary. They're all created by patients, for patients, steered by patients, informed and, and, and uh, uh, improved on, on by patients. And you know, that's, a, it's a whole different thing. When you think about tinctures and all the different formulations that we have available, those are all patient driven care. Like we figured out how THC and CBD worked and then how to have daytime and nighttime dosing and that sort of thing. And then to use the acidic molecules, CBDA, THCA or CBG, a very strong anti-inflammatory or CBN, something that might be sedating and, and using those in combination with CBD and THC. So there's all kinds of formulations, but these are all driven by, you know, just basic research and patients and uh, people that are producing in the industry to, you know, give this solution to patients uh, for another option away from pharmaceuticals. So uh, you know, going back to one, absolutely. Two is it's going to take more time for people to really step out of the pharmaceutical uh, uh, traditional healthcare, conventional healthcare, because you know, with COVID, you, you, you mentioned this with respect to the pandemic, right? We have mm -hmm. all of these people with metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular illness, um, diabetes, obesity, hypertension, lung conditions. Those are the ones that are not doing well when they get COVID, right? Mm -hmm. And when you think about traditional and conventional pharmaceuticals, they're not doing anything to help raise the health status. They're just trying to give people uh, a way to get through the day. Uh, cannabinoids are a way to get through the day and maybe to increase and improve health status by improving the underlying conditions because there's 7 billion of us on the planet and we all have an ECS. When you think about the endocannabinoid system and the ability to boost this you know, uh, super regulatory system that literally is the communication between our cells uh, and, and all of our, our systems and physiologies from the central nervous system to the immune system, to the endocrine system and the digestive and the cardiovascular, every single one of our systems is impacted by the endocannabinoid system. So when you can start to modulate and improve the health of this system, now you can improve all of those other ones, which is why, you know, I used to take a dozen pills a day and now I've had probably a dozen days without a pill, literally. Wow. You know, and, and it's, I, I can't remember when I last took a Motrin, <laughs> you know, wow. and I, and I used to take 2000 milligrams a day. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, I, uh, we did a, a recent news headline that nurses are trying everything they can for sleep and medical doctors in the emergency room are trying everything that they can. And uh, a New York city hospital, uh, medical doctor, ER doctor stated that he, he came anonymously and said that he was trying medical cannabis. And I thought that was great. Still wanted to remain anonymous, but um, that's okay. It's a step in the right direction. Well, I really, I really hope nurses and all medical professionals who are going through this time right now, take a moment to reflect on what's going on in society and what they can do to be better. You know, we can't fix the pandemic, but we can help elevate the moods along the way. And thinking different, thinking outside the box. We're going to have to, we had to think outside the box, you know, with COVID, we can do it with other medications as well. And it's as if they can start with themselves, you know, taking your courses, reading about it, just get curious about mm -hmm. medical cannabis. It doesn't mean they have to consume it. it. doesn't mean they have to promote it, but just knowing it's there and it exists and, but 
be willing to take that that step further and and do something about it. And it sounds like your program just bl is blowing me away as how much it's expanded since I've known you. And yeah. um, I hope medical professionals uh, he are listening and can hear everything that you have to offer. Yeah, I have a um, grid on holisticcaring.com on the professional programs uh, tab where it explains the Holistic Caring uh, Cannabis Health Coach Certification and okay. Licensing Program with the full course curriculum, uh, as well as the toolkit wow. contents. And then the middle one is the Holistic Caring CBD Health Coach Certification, where you don't need a toolkit because you're probably already still in traditional or, or conventional <laughs> healthcare, but you want this on top of this to give you the... Uh, the data and the information to have intelligent conversations because mm -hmm. you're right, people are coming in to hospitals all over the country now in the 36 legal states uh, and saying, you know, I am using a tincture. I have a CBD tincture that I'm taking every day. And, you know, it really behooves these clinicians to be able to understand that. Uh, and then that yeah. third uh, column is the uh, CBD uh, cannabis coach. Uh, and that is for the educators and industry folks that don't need to learn this as much on a clinical basis, but to understand the underpinnings of everything on how medical cannabis works in the body and more about the products and about the system and about the safety uh, and the quality uh, that really needs to be in these products because, you know, um, we're trying to solve the bigger problems, right? You know, when, when you think about healthcare in America, we know there are dysfunctional issues. When you think about cannabis in America, we know that it's a green rush and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's also become a profit driven uh, industry that is really trying to now almost look like a commodity, like coffee, right? Coffee is, is one of the, the largest selling items worldwide and cannabis is going to rival and beat that in a couple more years, right? And so I hope. my contribution to all of this is to build that medical door and to you know, be at the dispensaries where people really do care, where people really uh, do want to uh, bridge the gap uh, and to give the, the patients and the consumers that are coming in uh, real content and information, not just making stuff up, you know? So whether it is a bud tender that, you know, really wants to do the right thing and to, to you know, up their, their knowledge and their game, or, or if this is a clinician that wants to add this to their clinical conversations they're having every day, Holistic Caring has a door for them. And, you know, we're looking for partners, um, you know, that are strategic partners uh, that, you know, want to, to do this right, to, to really build this medical door. You know, I have a dream that, you know, states like Oklahoma, where, you know, it's medical only and it's booming, you know, Holistic Caring programs can go and train the dispensaries Right. So we could train all of their staff. Uh, we also have patient programs. So I didn't even mention that. So I have uh, patient programs that are hour long mm. recorded lectures. Uh, so let's just take cannabis and cancer. So if you're mm. a, a cancer patient, you can listen to the lecture. You get all of the slides that you, you can download and go through on your own. All of the references and resources that were built for that slide deck. So now you can take the PubMed articles to your doctor and say, hey, I understand that cannabinoids might be able to help me with cancer in these ways, symptom reduction, but po possibly having anti-cancer properties. And I'd like to use it in conjunction with my chemotherapy. And here's what I've learned. Uh, and so giving them all of this content uh, in the pre recorded presentation, the slides, the references, the resources, also uh, the basics of CBD, the basics of uh, holistic medicine and functional medicine and how to interlace cannabinoids together with diet, uh, movement, exercise, stretching, uh, connection, speaking up, setting boundaries, voicing what they mm -hmm. need to, to, to voice, uh, and having prayer and meditation and, and, and good sleep and healthy entertainment and how to be a wholehearted being. So all of that is in there along with uh, the patient forum, because my patient modules are all built in the uh, the same network platform that my regular courses are in. So there's a patient <laughs> forum. So now imagine once you get done with uh, the uh, recorded lecture and the slides, you can start communicating with other patients that have cancer 
that are using cannabinoids as part of their treatment tool. And now you can wow. say, Hey, what are you using? What are, what, you know, and, and what are the, some of the pros and cons and, you know, are, are, were you afraid at first? And, and now three weeks in, tell me what you're experimenting, uh, experiencing. I, I had a, a patient consult and I still do one-on-one -on -one telemedicine with people all over the country. I had uh, a heartbreaking case on Sunday afternoon. I saw a young mother with a 14 year old girl in Kansas, uh, with Ewing sarcoma. Uh, and she's got about three months left is what they're giving her. Uh, and she, so during this consult, I'm educating her about cannabinoids. And all of a sudden she goes, hold on a second. Let me show you what I have. And, and she's got three bottles of a 10 to one CBD THC. She's got a couple bottles of a one to one, and she's got seven syringes of RSO. And I'm like, okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to help wow. you use every single thing that you have there. And here's how to do that. So now it's Tuesday morning. I'm already getting emails that she doesn't need as much of the methadone. She's not in, in the constant pain that she was in when she started this two days ago. Uh, and she's starting to sleep deeper when she's at night and she's a more alert during the day. Uh, and she's, she's smiling and she's eating two days in. And so, Incredible. you know, I'm teaching patients how to do this themselves through these, uh, these lectures, these recorded patient modules and packages, and also wow. how to connect with us. So the patient modules uh, are a do it yourself where they have literally everything that they need to be successful. But if you stack on one of my fast and friendly personalization calls, you know, a 30 minute phone call with a nurse, now you have everything you need. And so the patient module is only $100, right? So they could plug into that, get all of this information, uh, and, and it's in, in an app. So they could watch these presentations with their healthcare providers. They could watch them with their family, wherever they are. They get 365 day access to this program. Um, and uh, then you tack on a, fi a $50 fast and friendly personalization call with a nurse, and now you have everything you need. Uh, and uh -huh. so I literally am trying to solve the problem of cannabis healthcare in America, because going back to that Oklahoma dispensary, you could train all of the dispensary staff with the educator in, in industry uh, training. You could train your local clinicians that are in your surface area. So uh, let's just say that dispensary can tell all of the healthcare providers in a 10 mile radius that they could take the healthcare provider course. Now the healthcare providers can actually be part of the solution and that, that dispensary has people that are in the community referring patients in with the guidance of a healthcare professional, the dispensary staff know what they're doing more. And then the patients get uh, the patient modules, which they could buy on their own for cancer, Parkinson's, MS, Alzheimer's, chronic pain, opiate uh, reduction. And wow. in the next month, I'm going to have autoimmune conditions and mental health built out. So, wow. yeah, it, it's... Uh, it, <laughs> Our are you looking to hire nurses? Are you, yes. you know, or is okay. uh, yeah? I, I'm a, I'm a member of the American Cannabis Nurses Association. I've been on the board. Uh, this uh, I just yeah, it's it's been a, a full year. I'm in my second year, uh, and I'm actually the treasurer of that organization. Um, and so uh, I I would love to have more nurses uh, work part time in the telemedicine uh, portal. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, we're also starting to work with CBD companies to help them with a medical front. Uh, and I'm putting together what I call my jumpstart kit, which uh, a healthcare professional could <laughs> carry CBD in their office and have all of the forms that they need to educate patients on a, a two page front back uh, guide on cannabinoids and what they need to know, as well as educate that staff of this uh, the healthcare practitioner office that wants to carry CBD. So this is a turnkey system for a wow. healthcare practitioner to carry CBD in their office, as well as a CBD company uh, that wants to have that value differential and to get into healthcare offices, uh, they could work with Holistic Caring in our Jumpstart Kit uh, to get their message out as well. Wow.
Incredible, Elizabeth. I am, I, you know, I could keep talking to you all day and hearing you lecture and you just keep expanding your program through holistic caring by the minute. Um, I definitely am going to have you back on a show to see the progress that you've made. And I anticipate plenty of progress too, because mm -hmm. you're not trying to change. You actually are changing. Yeah. And, um, I look forward to where you go. And, um, I think Oklahoma is going to be a good, good start. Just don't, don't move there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like you here in Southern California. Um, but we can't be here together face to face. So I appreciate your time today and mm -hmm. explaining your program and how you got your career in cannabis and, I hope that those healthcare workers are listening, can take those insights and, and see the value and also do the same thing. It sounds like a great opportunity for nurses to be involved with holistic caring on a part-time basis. So if someone is looking to reach out to you, how, how can, they, can they reach you? Uh, go to holisticcaring.com uh, and you can uh, click the contact us and there's a little box that says, please share your thoughts. Uh, so that's probably the best way. Those go right into our inbox. Uh, info at holisticcaring.com is the email. Uh, so you can always uh, email us. And if you're a vendor, if you're a producer of CBD and you have, you know, flower derived, lab tested, organic whole plant formulations you want to talk to us about, we have a CBD marketplace on our website where, that we're building out. We always need more brands. Uh, and if you're, you know, in California, and you have a statewide THC delivery platform, I would absolutely love to speak with you about how we might be the medical door to increase your business. Sounds fantastic. I'll make sure to spread the message to those that I know as well. Thank you. But thank, thank, thank you, thank you, you so much. Thank you for the platform and the opportunity yes. to speak to you today. Yes, you too. Be well, please. My thanks again to Elizabeth Mack for being my guest on today's episode. You can follow our series Careers in Cannabis as well as more great shows like this one at trichomes.com. If you're a member of the cannabis community and you have a story you want to share with us, please reach out. You can reach the show by emailing careersincannabis at trichomes.com. Please take a second to subscribe to the podcast and write a review. It really, really helps others to find the show. You can also join in the discussion with industry insiders by visiting trichomes.com and following us on all social media. For trichomes.com, I'm Ashley Manning. Thank you for listening and be well.